A lot of people consider Aura one of the most fun characters to play as in Street Fighter V, and personally, I completely agree. He's probably my favorite character in the game, and I think he was an amazing addition. In fact, he's now an even more fun character, because he got a ton of really substantial buffs in the definitive update. However, there's a good reason he got those buffs. As fun as he was, Aura on release was not a strong character at all. Of course, it's hard to say exactly how bad he was, and at the end of the day, being low tier in Street Fighter V, it doesn't mean you're terrible or anything, but he was a low tier nonetheless. Aura on release had a lot of shortcomings as a character. His neutral wasn't very good, and while he had some good pressure tools, he struggled to actually apply that pressure because of his lack of good knockdowns. He struggled to convert into a knockdown in neutral. And he could get a knockdown off his lights, but not a particularly workable one. Either one that left him minus after a dash. Or one that required charge and lost to back rise. His most workable knockdowns usually required some kind of specific starter, such as standing medium punch which can be quite awkward to land, or EX Tatsu, which obviously requires meter. Even then, he typically has to sacrifice damage to get decent Oki, unless he has the corner. Also, keep in mind that until the most recent update, he couldn't even go into EX Tatsu off lights without a counter hit, which just made things even more difficult. However, despite these shortcomings, Oro had one incredibly powerful trick up his sleeve. His V-Trigger 2, Tengu Stones, was and still is a contender for the game's best V-Trigger. It is absolutely ludicrous, and it does so much for the character. Tengu Stone is absolutely terrifying, and it gives Oro massive comeback potential. On hit, it leads to huge damage and corner carry, and on block, it puts the opponent in a very nasty situation where they typically have to guess right several times in a row to escape safely. Also, if you can get a punish with a raw activation, you can get Twitter clip levels of damage. However, you gotta remember that Tengu Stone is Oro's V-Trigger 2, as in, there's two of them. So, what's the story with V-Trigger 1? The story is that it's really fucking bad, I'm sorry guys. Oro's V-Trigger 1 gives him access to two new moves. Pressing Heavy Punch and Heavy Kick on the ground gives you a grounded command grab. And doing the same in the air gives you an air grab. Both are active on frame 5, do 200 damage, but the air version does 250 stun while the grounded version does 240. Unlike most command grabs, you can combo into both of them. The grounded version does the same damage and stun whether you combo into it or not. While the air version does 40 less damage and 50 less stun if you combo into it. On top of cancelling into it from normals, you can cancel into the grounded command grab from light, medium, or the first hit of heavy Tatsu. You can also cancel into it from EX Fireball, which I'm pretty sure has zero practical application. Although, if you've picked V-Trigger 1, then practicality obviously isn't your main concern, so might as well go for it. You can also cancel into it off either V-Skill 2 follow-up. This is completely useless for the overhead, because you can link out of it anyways. But it's actually quite nice for the kick follow-up. Usually you don't get any kind of a combo here, and it's two hits, so you can react to whether it hits or gets blocked. 
You can combo into the air version of any DP. Or chicken dance, which I can't think of any practical use for. A big issue with Aurora's V-Trigger 1 is that it just doesn't really help him with any of his key issues as a character, or fix some kind of a hole in his game plan. Yes, it does let you get a knockdown in some situations where you usually couldn't get one, and it effectively adds another layer to his pressure because, you know, it is a command grab after all. But at the same time, it also effectively ends his pressure when you land it, because while it does give a knockdown, it is not a workable knockdown at all. You are plus 6 after a forward dash, but you are miles away from the opponent, nowhere close enough to get any pressure. And you might think that it could set up his zoning pretty decently, but not really. If you go for a V-Skill 1 right after landing command grab, you're minus 42. Auto's V-Skill 1 is a fantastic zoning and pressure tool, but he needs a good opportunity to set it up, and unfortunately, after V-Trigger 1 command grab is not one of those opportunities. You're better off going for it after a target combo or a chicken combo, where you can sacrifice damage to get a safe setup. Now, you might suspect that you could alleviate the issue of throwing the opponent so far away from you by using the move while cornered, but unfortunately, that's just not the case. Capcom was so adamant about not letting you get Oki after this fucking move that they literally gave Oro a wave dash. The air grab gives a much better knockdown, but it's still not amazing, unfortunately. It does prevent back rise, which is nice, because that's something Oro struggles to chase sometimes. It leaves you plus 14 and decently close to the opponent. Unfortunately, for any kind of a mix-up, you do need to walk in a bit, and you're very far outside of throw range, but it's definitely better than the grounded grab, that's for sure. One cool thing about the air grab, though, is that doing it after EXDP effectively gives you a frame 1 invincible reversal that does over 300 damage and nearly 400 stun. Here, I do a minus 7 on block attack, and Ryu retaliates with a frame 8 attack. I swear, when this was revealed, it was like the only time people ever talked about this V-Trigger ever. So, while I definitely say that the air grab is the better of the two grabs, it's also arguably the harder of the two to land. You really do need to land a DP in order to go into it, and all his options for doing that are kinda limited. His light confirms typically don't give enough time to get charged for a DP, and while he can go into it off EX Tatsu, you gotta remember that pre-patch his options for going into that were kinda limited too. He couldn't go into it off his 3-framer, and he couldn't raw confirm crouching medium kick the way he can now. Oh, I literally forgot to combo into the command group. You know, I don't think it matters. I think that kind of works. That shows how forgettable this shit is. Speaking of hard to land, here's a big problem with V-Trigger 1. Specifically, the grounded command grab. The range on this is very, very underwhelming, and it kind of defeats the purpose of, you know, getting a knockdown in situations where you normally couldn't. Because, you know, you can't. Even with it. It's a shame this didn't work, because it would have made Oro's neutral a lot scarier, potentially. Crouching medium kick into light Tatsu was one of Oro's most common buffers, and it's not something you want to do up close where this does work, because light Tatsu is minus 8 on block. However, this was slightly amended in the most recent balance patch. See, you can now raw confirm crouching medium kick into medium Tatsu, and that always works no matter how far out you are. This is a pretty big indirect buff to V-Trigger 1, but it's not the only one. See, medium kick Tatsu used to just push the opponent out on hit, which was really lame, it just left you plus 2 and pretty far away. But now, it drags the opponent in, which is potentially pretty scary considering that you have a command grab and your plus two. You could choose to not cancel medium kick Tatsu into command grab, sacrificing guaranteed damage to get a potential mix-up.
Now, while these indirect buffs are nice, Oro's V-Trigger 1 didn't do all that well in terms of direct buffs. It only got two direct buffs in the definitive update, which is kind of surprising considering how bad this trigger was, and unfortunately still is. The first of which being that it simply lasts longer. It used to last for 2,000 frames, and now it lasts for 3,000. You still only get two grabs, but, uh, you know, gives you more time to contemplate your terrible V-Trigger choice. The only other direct buff this trigger received is that you can now V-Trigger cancel EX Fireball into either V-Trigger 1 or V-Trigger 2. Of course, it's not exclusive to V-Trigger 1, but it's honestly a pretty great activation route for the trigger. It does require meter and charge, but honestly, it's not that bad. Speaking of V-Trigger activation though, there's one more indirect buff I want to talk about, and it's V-Trigger cancelling Crouching Medium Kick. See, for some reason, the activation for V-Trigger 1 takes two frames longer than the activation for V-Trigger 2. If you V-Trigger cancel Crouching Medium Kick in V-Trigger 2 pre-patch, you'd be plus 10, which was great, because forward medium punch is plus 10. And in V-Trigger 2, that really just let you do whatever the fuck you wanted. However, in V-Trigger 1, you used to be plus 8 in the same situation. Not being able to go into forward medium punch was really shit for V-Trigger 1 Oro, and I'm not sure why it was like this, honestly. I'm pretty sure your only combo from this far out was Raw Super. Which does pretty underwhelming damage thanks to scaling. If you were a little bit closer, you could do crouching medium punch. Or Raw Heavy DP. Fortunately, Crouching Medium Kick got two extra frames of hits done in the definitive update, which means V-Trigger 1 now gets the forward medium punch link. Unfortunately, V-Trigger 2 got a whole lot more than two extra frames. For some ungodly reason, thanks to the definitive update, you can now cancel any meterless Tatsu into V-Trigger 2 but not V-Trigger 1. This is amazing for V-Trigger 2, I mean it can save you from a bad confirm, and it increases V-Trigger 2's already absurd damage, so I'm not complaining, cause like, if you're playing Oro, you're playing V-Trigger 2, that's just how it is, but would it have really been that bad to let V-Trigger 1 have this? Like realistically, I have a funny feeling V-Trigger 1 wasn't gonna tear the game apart if it got this. Like come on. So that's Oro's V-Trigger 1, and it's definitely a bit of a strange case. This isn't like a Yurian or an Akuma situation where neither V-Trigger is bad per se, it's just that one clearly outclasses the other. No, it genuinely feels like you've got a top 3 and a bottom 3 V-Trigger on the same character here. And that makes it all the more surprising that they were very, very modest when it came to buffing it in the definitive update. To be completely honest, I think there's a very valid argument to be made for Oro having the biggest gap in viability between his two triggers in the entire game. V-Trigger 1 just doesn't do anything for him. I mean, yeah, it's a two-bar trigger, so I guess you can be more liberal with V-Reversal and V-Shift, but other than that, it genuinely has nothing going for it. Nothing that's worth, you know, giving up V-Trigger 2 for anyways. I wouldn't even recommend it to new players. Like, I get that it's easier to understand than V-Trigger 2, but what's the point of learning Oro if you're not going to learn V-Trigger 2? Learning Oro with V-Trigger 1 is like learning how to swim in preparation for your driving test. Just don't, okay? On the bright side, while I guess it's a bit of a failure from a balance perspective, his V-Trigger 1 is an excellent third strike reference because his V-Trigger 1 and V-Trigger 2 are directly based on his Super 1 and Super 3 from third strike. Tengu Stone is one of the best V-Triggers in Street Fighter V, and it's one of the best supers in third strike. So I'll let you guess how good his Super 1 is. It's not. 